you can probably guess by the pile of empty boxes and trash behind me that this is the estate sale house we're working on in Spokane, and wow, is it full. Besides being lived in for 45 years by an antique dealer, this place was also a storehouse for said antique dealer when she lived in another location. So this place is so full of lots of little interesting things, starting with a massive postcard collection and photos. We put them out here because fortunately we're having very dry days and this porch is weatherproof. And we had so many and we need a place where people can stand and mull through these and take their time because we have so much little stuff like this all through the house that people are going to be in each other's way all weekend if we don't do something. And look at this cutie. She's in something called a key to the city. So that's a prospector in a parade. There is the Cisco kid, and that is signed. Ooh, we got to take that out. Yeah, see, this is the thing. We have just been setting up and setting up and setting up, and we're finally getting to the point where we can, and you'll see some old prices. Those are not our prices. They will be estate sale priced. But this is some old dealer's inventory and a whole bunch of stuff that she bought thinking she was going to sell it someday, plus a lot of useful things for around the house. So moment of truth, this is it. It is very crowded. There is a ton of stuff here. Uh, we've been working on sorting and separating. You could not walk through this house. We've had a couple of weeks to get rid of a whole lot of garbage and try to get things in some sense of order. And now it's setup time and to some extent pricing. This is going to be one of these sales that is a digger in terms of you have to flip through things to find them, but we're going to present them in a way where it's not a digger where people are in an unsafe position because of the way things are stacked or displayed. We just might not get it all priced. There's a bunch of Star Wars here, including some of the original old Star Wars, like the cookie jar and the talking alarm clock. Those are not cheap, but they are half of what they sell for on eBay. So somebody who recognizes that may just go for them. There is a bunch of Star Wars stuff here, actually, and we think there may be more in another closet. We haven't gotten through everything here yet, but I've got to film because this is my deadline to film and show you guys the kind of things that are in the estate. We have an entire attic loft full of art and prints and paintings. I fortunately have had some really great people helping and doing a ton of the work and doing a lot of this when I was out of town. So now I'm jumping in and trying to do my part so we can get this show on the road. There's just so much everywhere you look here. All right, we're going to take a look now underneath the piles because I have always wanted to see what the piece under all of this stuff looked like. As long as I knew my friend who had this house, I never have seen the top of this stove because she always had it covered because she didn't want it to get damaged because someday, ooh, I see why, how pretty. She was going to have this be in her store and have this be a focal point for kitchenware. Now, we found money in her other stove, so we're going to look in here. Mm, paper. Oh, the delivery bill. She got this across the street. Oh, that's funny. All right, so, oh, a piece of rose bill, pine cone. That's a nice little thing to start with in your oven. What else do we have in our oven? Obviously, we were not cooking a lot, but there's a salt and pepper shaker from the era. This is a 1930s range. And there's this, oh, the manuals, that's great. We got to open it up and see what it is. And we haven't looked at this nice quilt, but it does have some damage kitty cats. And what is in this chest? Haven't been into this one yet. And oh, it looks like a bunch of warm weather gear. Well, you know, this is going to be a house with a bunch of household products and clothes and regular stuff too, but it's an estate sale and all this will sell to people who can use it or to resellers as well. My friends are here putting in the railing. This house has never had a railing. And they went to Habitat for Humanity and got it for me. I am so blessed with really great people because, you know, you've got to make the house, sure the house is safe because a house this crowded can be really dangerous to people if you don't clear everything off the stairs. You could not walk up the staircase without stepping on things until today. So got paths cleared. 
Now we've got to set it up. And boy, are there so many categories here. There is a box of comic books, and some of these are vintage. Now we see a 40 cent there, but there's Star Wars, number five. There's Freedom Fighters, Star Trek. There's some really cool old trade cards here with just the most amazing cute graphics. A lot of local and Northwest interest stuff here. This is from the Crescent that was the premier department store in Spokane for many years. There's a lot of restaurant wear in this house, just like there was in my friend's other house that we did. But this is Spokane Club, so it's got the chieftain in the headdress. We've got several pieces of that. Uh, we have this compact, which is Alaska. There's a lot of Alaska interest in this area because we are in the Northwest, and that's from about the time of statehood. And no, oh, we priced that one, 15. That's a pretty good deal. See, I would buy it if I were shopping at this sale, but I'm not. I'm holding it, so it's for someone else. Spokane Esmeralda Golf Course. I love that face. That's the Alaska Line Steamship. A pellet gun. Don't be scared. It's just a pellet gun. These books are pins and pinbacks, and there are some really good old ones in here, so we're going to have to, I mean, we're never going to get all these things priced individually. We're going to probably put these out on a table and then let people look at them individually. Some of these are club pins, which are more common, but then there's some old Northern Pacific pins and Union Pacific and Great Northern. Rock Island five-year pin. My grandfather probably had that pin. And then there's all these tax from local companies and lots of local interest things. And then just pins, ski resort pins, metallic arts badges and tokens from World's Fairs and various commemoratives and E.T. I mean, these boxes could be full of almost anything. All we can do really is get this out, try to keep it sorted by type as much as we possibly can and let people have fun looking and looking and looking. We know people are gonna be here every day of the sale for hours because it's gonna take that long to get through it all. Hey there, dude. All right, I was asked to try this out. So we're gonna do the backwards walk down the stairs because we've got a handrail. So see, anything is safe now. So thank you so much, that is awesome. A whole lot of reference books, actually, all sorts of old antique reference books, the old Schroeder's Price Guides, Garage Sale, and Flea Market Annual, which I used to contribute to in the middle there. There's a treasure craft listing in there. Bunch of briar animals and the white tiger. We have plants up for adoption as well and a couple of leaded and stained glass windows and Darth Vader and Chewbacca hanging out in the plants. Tons of artwork and prints all over the place. There is a little bit of jewelry in here. There is a bunch of medallions. There are a whole bunch of little tins. There are watches. There are a whole bunch of things that are gonna be as little as three and four dollars a piece in these bins. And again, people are just gonna have to dig because that's what we can do. There's a few silver pieces that look like they got marked up a little bit. This is walrus tusk, not the kind of ivory that we'll get in trouble for. So we can leave that out. That's why it's here. If it was elephant ivory, we would not be able to have it out to sell. So happy about the little accordion. I just think that's fun. The lion dominoes. We have a little gang of dogs hanging out over here. The peanuts and, sorry, Charlie. Then there's the kitchen, and well, there's a whole lot of screen print glasses, silent era and early talkie movie stars and Star Trek. This is similar to the other house that we did for this client. Uh, a lot of Coke bottles, a little bit of nice china, the Evesham from Royal Worcester. And this is a piece of Port Mary in the little vase. Or actually, no, it's a candlestick. Look at that. Hmm. Must have been a pair originally. Some more screen print glasses, including some cool stuff that looks like it's local interest. This one with the brands on it is kind of in the 50s from the restaurant. A nice little piece here. This is Franciscan, I believe. Yeah, because it's the two-tone and it's Catalina Pottery. Yeah, they did a lot of two-toning in the late 30s and early 40s after they bought Catalina from Wrigley and moved it from Catalina Island to L.A. This was the kind of thing they did. A flamingo would look really good in that more cafe wear, and of course, everything else you can imagine, because she just loved to collect. So there's every magnet you could imagine. And there are even pantry supplies and cleaning supplies and 
Sirocco wood art. And then we come out to the back and the back is another big area. We are just starting to load these tables in here because we have to get things out of the house in order to make room and out of the back storage unit, which is not well lit so that people can see them. So we've got a bunch of toys. Again, a whole lot of 50s, 60s era toys. There's the Treasure Craft Saguaro cookie jar, which those are selling now. They are an 80s icon that is collectible again. This guy we're gonna put where the rest of these go because we have an area for those. Pepsi. And some copper tone banks. Ooh, I like the camel. Not really used to seeing the camel. See, if I came to this sale, I would spend money. Miss Piggy is a good bank. Dino and Pebbles. Pebbles looks a little sinister in that one. A whole bunch of souvenir spoons. And here are the plushes. And there are some cute ones. There's a nice chieftain puppet. There's the Dole Kids. There's a and W Bear and Knight of the Living Burger Kings. There's two of them. I swear everybody in Spokane came to the last sale we had, and this house is just as stuffed, so we're hoping everybody in Spokane comes to this one too, and someone will be the owner of this buckboard, made sometime around 1930. Look at what a great basic design. You have a pulley, you have foot pedals, and that's how you steer, and you have a handbrake that breaks both wheels in the back, and away you run. Probably wouldn't pass today's child safety standards, but what a cute thing that is. We had one of these at the other sale that we did for this client and it sold and I suspect this one too. They're very handy and a lot of dealers like to use them in displays now. That's from the 1960s. We'll go past the gatekeepers here. I believe these are Yoruba or Ivory Coast of Africa, that area. I'm not expert on these, but the faces, those elongated sort of almond shaped eyes and the mouth seem to be indicative of the type of carving. And you can tell they used one large piece of wood and carved from the top and turned it. So we're going to go back here. We've got an old women's bike. We've got a bunch more character glasses. We've got a bunch of useful houseful stuff and some old tins and some newer tins, all being guarded by this owl right here. More crates. I just spent a bunch of money on a cart like this and lo and behold, there's one right there and look <laughs> in it. This looks like somebody's been shopping at an antiques show. Shawnee corn. Your clothes all go in a pile over where clothes go. Majestic stove lid. That's neat. And then there's what's left of an old bath and clothes and linens. And hey, look, more clothes. We had so much stuff. We had to put some stuff out here. We've got a cool old printed tapestry blanket, and then we've got a quilt here. So there is just so, so very much stuff. We will get it out. We will get it as sorted as possible. They've actually done a ton of room in here. This was boxes and boxes and boxes of mugs originally. And I mean, just look at this. I know mugs are a thing now, so if you are selling online and this is your role, you should come to this sale. There's going to be tons of this fun little stuff that is not very expensive. This is cool. That's from the old Crystal Hamburgers when that was what a crystal stand looked like back in the 50s. So, yeah, people are going to have fun in here. And then there's more boxes we still have to go through and more boxes. And more boxes. So we are going to have our hands full and people are going to have a great time going through all of this and trying to pick the plums out of all of this stuff because there certainly are some. There's some fun things. There's some things that definitely sell these days and there are a few really interesting and good things. They are actually getting a bigger railing for us, which is great. So that gives me a chance while they're not uh, screwing that into the wall up here to show you what's up here and oh boy yes more piles more childhood stuff underneath it looks like a very unused tweedy couch we don't have a lot of furniture in this sale but what furniture there is has scarcely been touched in a very long time as you can tell so oh my goodness way more books to get in order more prints and art like i told you and I don't think anyone's been through much of that dresser other than to see that there's not a lot in it. A whole bunch of boxes of Christmas that seems a little more recent. 
What did one dinosaur say to the other dinosaur? No, really, you're the real Shirley MacLaine? Here's one of these pieces in the cork frame that I really enjoy. I just, this frame is amazing to me, really. It's 1970s. And you think, oh, well, that was sort of a little tacky and cheesy at its time. But this was a lot of work to hand lay all of this in and to keep it from getting damaged. And actually now, with the test of time, I think it really looks cool in an arts and crafts kind of way that works with turn of the century arts and crafts from the 1900s and teens. There's going to be signed pieces in here, like this one, which I think is rather interesting. Lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of boxed boxed pictures. This one is one that we see from time to time that people seem to like from San Francisco. This was done for United Airlines. They actually commissioned the painting by Fred Lutikins, and it's the San Francisco cable car. This is a very cute Turner print with the airbrushed look with the dove from about 1945. And this is neat because it's arts and crafts where you take a person's picture and decoupage. I, I keep saying the arts and crafts period in some ways was like the 1970s. A lot of people got into home crafting. And this is a really fun piece with that girl celebrating her flapper bob. I see even more Soraka wood hiding under there, which we'll take outside. Posters galore. A neat old showcase, which we'll need for some of the small items we're finding of value. And then chalkware for no reason. Yes, this is organized by type of item, but organization, well, that's going to come over the next couple of days. But I've got to film now because we are not going to be able to put this out after tomorrow. So you're going to see it just the way it is now. And then hopefully, if you're in the area, come to the sale and you can marvel at all the things that we found and how it's somewhat more organized than this. I think that's supposed to be Rin Tin Tin. Is that not correct? Anyhow, I'm going to watch my step and I will say this. If you're anywhere near the Spokane area, please do come to this sale. It's going to be Friday through Sunday this weekend and it is going to be a barn burner. It is in the Garland area off of Monroe and really close to where the antique stores on Monroe are, so it's a good reason to come to the area. If you're not in the Spokane area, well then please enjoy it with us now and then we'll show you the results as things progress. Here is a giant stack if you remember the New York World's Fair of 1964 or I Spy or when Disneyland was pretty new. There is a game in here for you. There's everybody from Howdy Doody to Laurel and Hardy, and it is really, really fun to see all of these old games again. The graphics are just great. So this is going to be a fun sale. And then if you're into books, well, books and paper ephemera, there's a whole lot in here. I like these old moon mullins. I've sold those before. They're from about 1920 when Bringing Up Father also was a big publication under the same company. They just, and there's the gumps. They just have good graphics. They're from the late 20s. And then, wow, there's old and vintage and newer books. There are books that are comical. There's books that are signed. There are books that are about people who are subjects that people collect, and there are the books based on the characters that they made. There's a bunch of big little books, there's a bunch of golden books, there's reference books on the art of Walt Disney, and the books keep going and going, and like everything else in here, going and going and going. I think it took about half a day to set all of this up bringing books from everywhere in the house. And there still isn't really room for everything, but there's obviously a great potential for fun and for people who are booksellers or who just like to read these sorts of things. Well, there's a huge, huge, huge pile for you to go through. And again, that's the way it is. This sale is going to be one of those where 
People make big piles. We have basic prices on basic things. We price what we're able to do, and then we just have to figure it out as we go along. And we're lucky that we've had a lot of experience in the business and seen a lot of these things before so that we can price on the fly. I don't recommend that for everyone. This is not the way usually in an ideal world you would want to do this, but we have one weekend. We have a huge house. It is very, 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 very full of a lot of levels of stuff from nickel and quarter items up to the things that are worth three digits. We just have to handle it as best we can, and that's what we're going to do. And it'll be fun to watch the results. A lot of vintage t-shirts actually in this closet here. I noticed that when we took some of the clothes out of here to the outside, that there were vintage t-shirts in there too. And of course we have a lovely Afghan in great colors. I like the zigzag pattern personally. Chinese checkers. This is how most people are using Chinese checkers boards. They don't actually necessarily even take the marbles anymore. And all sorts of fun, interesting ephemera from over the years. Then there's this room, and this room has all sorts of characters in it. Characters galore. And oh, by the way, more clothes. But all of these characters from Pogo with the glasses. There's a neat ashtray with the nodder or wobbler in it from the 50s. And then up here, we've got a lot of ceramics. We've got the false graph drinking mugs. We've got more clocks, I especially like this one with the big bad wolf. The good thing is most of the things in here are in good condition. All of these Peanuts characters from around 1970, there's nodders and nowadays people call them bobbleheads, but these are the old ones and more rubber characters and more pins and more die-cast cars and more tokens and medallions. Political pins, local festival pins, R2-D2. I mean, you just don't know what you're going to find when you go around the next corner in this place. All those Disney characters and the plushes up here. I'll see the cow looks especially happy. Tins and more childhood stuff. These really fun cookie jars. The old pig winking and the newer octopus, which is such a fun color. And Sokies, coin banks, a couple of thermoses, Julia. That was a very popular show. I believe that was the first show where there was a black character who was the lead. She was a nurse. I believe that was 1969. Bozo the Clown. A Mighty Mouse little chalkboard there, and a big Disneyland bagatelle, and the little Hunter bagatelle. And then again, more pins, more playing cards, boxes of matches, boxes of ashtrays, boxes of butter pats, and bottle openers, and you name it. We probably have a box of it somewhere in here. Now, the gal who had all this stuff was a friend of mine, and she had a nice memory wall past Charlie Tuna here and the Sailor Boy Bank. And so she has a lot of things that were arranged by various categories. Ceramics here, we've got the whole tulip up there. We've got some Royal Copley. This very strange thing here in the back. And a good Carl Romanelli Metlocks piece there on the right, the sailfish. You know, these sell pretty well. I still think they go for about 30 and 35. I think this guy, it's either Japanese or it's Camark, if I remember right. I think it's a knockoff of Catalina pottery originally, but it's from the era and it's worth some money. We've got a gnome and one of the seven dwarfs, the Jameson's fish. And then up here, a bunch of characters again, a couple of Disney. This is the shelf full of bears. This is a little more Western and there's a nice piece of black glazed pottery back there. We'll have to see who did that one. Here are lots of salt and pepper shakers and another shelf full of fun things. More bears. This is a good wind up here. Oh, we have a price tag on that one. A few things we have priced. We're just starting to get that going a little bit as we see we're never going to be able to price all these things. So we're going to price the things that we think are important and the rest will have to go as we go along. This is really cute. This was locally made and they're pretty scarce. This is for the old Whistlin' Pig restaurant in Portland. 
and it was famous for glorified ham and eggs, as it says. This was just done by some little Oregon pottery company in the 1940s as an advertising piece for them. You don't see them very much. It's a local interest thing here in the Northwest. I love all the dogs, but this guy especially, this hand carved, looks like 1950s. And we do not know. Oh, wait, there we go. We have some sort of a mark. Let's see if we can see who made you. I'm getting interested in wooden things and trying to figure out a little more scholarship on them. So anytime I see a mark, I like to look. And this one says it's a Carter Hoffman original. Oh, that's funny. I did not have any idea that they had wooden items designed. Well, he's a good dog. Well, this is our neighbor and our neighbor keeps trying to get into the house, but we don't let cats in early. However, we do let members in early. If you are a member, we do bonus videos on the level two and level three level, and we have member only chat for the bonus video and the what sold video. We love engaging with our members. We are so grateful to them for the extra support they give this channel. If you'd like to become a contributing member, please look for the join button or go down below the dash line and look for memberships. It will tell you all about the different levels and the different perks. We're going to show you the basement. This is the quick and dirty tour. I wish I I can stop and linger on more things for you because there's a lot of interesting minutiae when you go through all of this. But I just want to show you the lay of the land and what we have to deal with because we have just a couple of days to get all this in order too. I see something fun back there with a whole bunch of decals from luggage with various airplanes on it. That looks like a neat thing. And some more cute whimsical ceramics. This looks like a bunch of just sort of kitchen and household junk in here. And then... Back here, I see a little bit more evidence of restaurant wear. Ooh, it's dark in here too. Yep, that's another thing with an old house. You know, we've got to set it up so that we can get some light on the subject here. Maybe this one works. Ah, much better, okay. So we have another newer cookie jar. Stick furniture, a big collection of slides. We'll have to check those out. Oh, a very pretty red. Chinese red pitcher from Hall. The tool bench is built in, but the bench vice can be sold. Charlie Chaplin and the Great Dictator. Boy, yeah, there's a lot of little stuff in here. I see Holly Hobby. I see mugs galore. I see Smurfs and toys. You know, a lot of little junk, but little junk does add up to a lot of tins that need to go outside. This is a bunch more restaurant wear in this little room here. This is a little more under control. More restaurant wear patterns. And then useful things like shop packs. You know, it's an estate sale, so it's everything. It's newer puzzles. It's newer games. It's newer toys. It's even Kaiser porcelain plates. And then we're going to come in here. This is the last big scary room. And lots of these are tins. But there's also a bunch of Disney in here. I see Pluto sticking his head out of this box. All sorts of rubber face characters. A Stein. I mean, we have our work cut out. Jungle related. I see a Zippo tin. Lots of VHS tapes, which I think will probably be staying right there. But I see a sign I think is cool underneath. Let's see what we have for sale. We have, oh, a garage for rent. Hmm. I think we could use one. Silver plate, I have not seen sterling. This looks like a pottery craft guy in here. Yes, it is. It's a little pig. This is one of the individual casseroles from pottery craft from about 1979. They did a whole line of cookware then. That's cute. Little 1930s and 40s cafe ware creamers. Well, I've got to stand in front of George's ham. Hopefully you don't think this is too hammy, but we are having fun here and we are looking forward to seeing you. If you're in the Spokane area, please do stop by, say hello. And if you're not, well, uh, leave a comment, let us know you're out there. We are busy, busy, busy with this, but we'll get back to more videos from other places. We've also been to an estate sale ourselves and a show here, so we'll have lots more to show from this part of the world. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.